I've been asked by Hammersmith Chess Club to judge their best game of the season competition. And in a moment, I'm going to show you my choice. In case you don't know, Hammersmith is in West London and the chess club meets every Monday evening in the splendid Mind Sports Centre. It's a really friendly club. There's a lot going on, lots of events, lectures, training from top players. Uh, there's a strong junior section as well. So do check it out if you live around there or if you're simply visiting London and you fancy a game on a Monday evening. Competition for the best game prize was strong and I think all the entries had, had merit. Uh, let me give you a quick rundown of some of the games. So this had a very, very nice finish. Black, uh, Adam Cranston from Hammersmith and he won very nicely here with Bishop takes Bishop. And now a Knight Fork. There we go. And so that has to be taken. Nice deflection. And after Queen takes Queen, this Rook is no longer defended. So a nice little combination. And that picked up both Rooks. And of course, that's an easy win. Yeah, very nice finish. This was a very tense game. Peter Robeson playing for Hammersmith against Alexander Chernyayev. And yeah, quite a nervy middle game, uh, but White broke through very nicely with, well, once again, a pin, exploiting a pin. Uh, that, was, that was a nice game, very tense. Then we had this finish from Gianmaria Mazzaracchio, a classic kingside attack. The queen is in the zone and knight h5, threatening a mate. That was taken. Queen takes h6, threatening another mate. And then knight g5, threatening mate again on h7. So black had to give up the queen. And then, well, we've seen it quite a few times before, the classic laser beam checkmate. A classic checkmating attack. We've seen that kind of thing many times before, but still very satisfying. Then we had another nice kingside attack from Gaston Franco. He broke through here with rook takes h7. Yeah, we've seen that kind of thing before as well. King takes rook, rook check, and rook h8 mate. Very nice. Then we had a very nice positional victory from Frank Valle. White is dominating this position. There's a pawn up and this is a very nice finish. Nice little shuffle with the bishop and rook and this one, a second pawn. You can see white is completely dominating here on the light squares. As I said, very smooth positional victory. I like that game a lot. And then we have uh, Ali Hill with black and he played a barnstorming kingside attack here, starting with g5. Um, this just opened up the kingside. The, the h file is already open. And yeah, he carried out a really nice kingside attack here. So that was also excellent game. But the winner, the winner is the winner I've chosen anyway is Marco Galana against Graham Buckley. The the games I've showed you before, the snippets, I think all very fine. But for a best game prize, I'm looking for something a bit special, a bit different, something I haven't seen before. I'm not looking for perfection. I'm looking for ambition and creativity. And that's what we have here. So Marco Galana uh, representing Hammersmith and he's playing against Graham Buckley, who's uh, an international master from England, who was playing for the mighty Wood Green. And this was played in the London League Division One. Okay, let's take a look. So Marco playing white and it's a Queen's Indian. And a3, the, the so-called Petrosian system. And Marco says that this was the first time that he'd played the Petrosian variation against the Queen's Indian. 
bishop a6 and he went e3 which is a little bit tame actually queen c2 straight away is the is the normal move but i mean e3 is very straightforward and after d5 queen c2 played bishop e7 and b4 okay now things start to cook so white looking potentially to expand with c5 or maybe b5 and buckley goes for c5 just blocking out this this pawn it's an interesting move actually because i mean it could be that the queen at some point is actually vulnerable on c2 once this rook gets into play queen a4 check uh, and again this is uh, this is a really unusual move it's a very interesting idea basically this drags the queen up and now b5 so the reason that uh, Marco played this was because the queen actually blocks the knight. You can see this this knight is a little bit stymied. I know it can potentially go to this square because of the pin, but um, you know it, it's a very unusual idea. Could be that the queen is offside actually, but both sides have yeah slightly awkwardly placed queens anyway. Pawn takes pawn. And here, bishop takes was played. I would prefer pawn takes pawn here. I would prefer to keep my pawns together. Anyway, bishop takes doesn't look bad for, for black either. And queen e7 looks normal to me. You could just castle, but queen e7 seems fine because that makes room for the knight to come here. So black wants to develop. And white develops. And now pawn takes pawn. And black could recapture with the knight here but instead goes for an isolated queen's pawn, which doesn't look bad. Bishop e2. And now I think if I were black, I would simply develop this piece here <clears throat> before embarking on anything. But instead, black goes for it straight away with knight e4. Of course, the outpost is exactly where you want the knight. I would just prefer to bring all my pieces out first. So that active knight is exchanged off. Good decision. <clears throat> and then knight d4. So you can see this knight has a splendid square here. It looks at f5. Also looks at c6. And the queen has sort of magically come back into play. It could be useful somewhere along, the, along this fourth rank. So now I think black got a bit spooked by potentially this one and, and played queen g5. And this is a really interesting moment in the game where white has quite a few options. I mean, if you wanted to play a very sensible move, you could just castle here. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But there are some other very interesting options. You could also go g4. You could also go h4. You could give up that pawn. Um, but white played king f1 and I, and well marco writes this is an an intuitive decision he says i don't think it's possible to predict the consequences of this move over the board especially with this time control I, i'm not sure what the time control is but i assume quite fast the idea is to keep the rook on h1 and then follow up with h4 yeah you see this is good stuff this this is very interesting very creative you know i really like this idea And, yeah, he says, during the game, this idea looked too interesting not to play it. But I'm sure it's, a, it's um, it, but I'm not sure it's the objectively the best move. Yeah, well, who cares? It's, it's very creative. Knight d7, h4. So here we go. <clears throat> Pushes the queen back. So that knight can't move because of the bishop. So therefore bishop defended so now there's potential for a discovered attack so knight e5 so black is fighting back that blocks the bishop but also that knight of course has potential to leap into to one of these squares maybe more, most likely d3 but anyway it has influence over those squares um looks looks very nice there 
rook h3, here we go. So the rook comes into play, might, might come here. And in combination with the bishop, well, you never know, something might turn up. There's a good practical, there's another reason for playing this as well. If knight c6, then bishop takes e3 is a bit awkward. So rook h3 actually defends that pawn. So there we go, useful. Now this is such a complicated position. Black has lots of options here. Um, I mean, the, the knight could come in here. Well, but Buckley decides on um, a, a very straightforward plan. So the bishop drops back, attacking the rook. The rook wants to go to g3, only draw back that h-pawn drops and black threatens mate in one as well. But here, just when it looks like black is taking over, that white plays an absolutely superb move. It's a really unusual move, very unusual tactics, and it brings the queen into play. It's really interesting. Here we go. Are you ready? Knight f3. This is fantastic stuff. So it's all about pins. Pawn takes knight allows queen takes queen. There you go. The queen comes into play. And let's have a quick look at knight takes knight. This is fun. Rook takes. Now, this isn't too difficult, but let's just see it because it's great fun. Discover check. And another discover check. And after this, well, let's get flashy and sack the queen. And that's mate. Splendid stuff. So you can see how white's ambition is sort of coming good after knight f3. You know, this was the whole idea to generate some kind of attack against black's king. So how does white defend? Well, queen h1 check first, and that forces the knight back. That's a pretty good start. But the king is fairly secure on f1, actually. The knight is attacked. So it drops back to g6. Yes, if f6, then actually the queen comes into play. And this is simply very good for white because this is attacked and the knight is attacked as well. And the queen is just sidelined. So knight g6 and queen takes e4. There we go. The queen magically appears from, from the wing. Again, black has quite a few choices here. Bishop e6 looks pretty logical to connect the rooks. And bishop g4 threatens to trap the queen with rook h3. I mean, it looks like a very sensible move. Uh, there was a, actually a very interesting alternative, and that was rook g5 with a similar idea to trap the queen. But yeah, bishop g4 looks very logical. Queen h4. So there's a pin there, and knight f3. Now, black could return with queen h1, and then knight g1 would repeat the position. But actually, Marco says that he was contemplating playing king e2. Very interesting move. Now, at the moment, that rook is defended, but after bishop c4 check, black gives up an exchange. Uh, excuse me, black wins an exchange. Now, white has a bit of compensation here. Um, is it enough? Hard to say, but, well, that was an option. In any case, it would have been possible to come back with knight g1. So queen e7, but, you know, Buckley, he's rated higher. He's wants to play for a win. Bishop takes, queen takes. Um, if pawn takes, well, white has a very strong move here. In fact, white's attack can come good. Well, after knight g5, there's just too much pressure here. It's just much too strong. So I think black was correct in going for an exchange of queens, but I mean, black is definitely worse here after knight h4. Still exploiting the fact that uh, g7 is vulnerable if 
Let, let's just see this again. If knight takes knight, then we have this very nice checkmate. There we go. And black is under pressure. Now, I'm not, as I said, I'm not sure of the time control, but we're only at move 29. Um, I can imagine that both players are in time pressure. So, you know, there are inaccuracies. I mean, I think in a game this complex, there are always going to be inaccuracies. Um, but somehow the, the play is sort of flows quite logically. Black played king f7 to protect the knight on g6. And yeah, apart from the creativity, uh, another reason that I chose this game is that there are three, there are all three phases of the game. We have opening, we, middle game, both very creative, um, and we have an end game as well, which is a long way from victory for white. You know, to fashion this into a win is tricky. Rook f3 check. Now, the king really should defend that pawn. So it came back. Rook takes, king takes. And here's a very interesting moment. Um, you know, one might imagine, I don't know, king e2 or rook d1 or something. But a4, this is a very clever idea. I mean, this pawn needs to come off the dark square anyway. But after this, a6, black threatens to exchange and activate the rook. So white just played rook a1. So this is very nice prophylaxis, actually. Just making sure that this rook isn't going to enter on the a file. And here black exchanged on b5. And I, I think there's, there's a very clear idea here for black, which I think should hold the game. Instead of a takes b5 as played, you really need to exchange off these bishops. It's clear that white's bishop is a superb piece. It looks at g7. b6 later on is potentially vulnerable. However, if black reaches a rook and pawn endgame, then actually there shouldn't be too much trouble. So I think a logical move here is bishop b7 with the idea of bishop f6 exchanging off the bishops and I think if you can do, if black can do that it should be a draw now white can prevent that with e4 but with the pawn on e5 blunting the bishop it's not as um yeah it's it's just not as good this position and I think black should be able to hold this one this is rather different from some things we're about to see later. I mean, this position is just too blocked. And white can try some other stuff. Maybe this move, this could get a little bit tricky. Um, but I have a feeling black is going to hold this one. The king at the moment can't play an active role in the game. And, you know, this, this one is going to come up to c6. Should be a draw. Okay, back to this position, rook a1 just played. But, I mean, you know, that requires, well, you need to see the idea of bishop e7, and even then, you know, there are some tricky moves. Black exchanged on b5. Now, big question is, should black go for this bishop endgame? Is this tenable for black? Still quite tricky. Two weak pawns. If this one advances to make room for the g-pawn, then the, that g5 pawn is weak. White has lots of ways to make progress. There could even be an exchange here at some point. I'm not sure whether black can hold that. It's possible. Still quite hard work. But what is clear is that rook a5 was really not a, a good move. This is just too ambitious, but it just doesn't work because, I mean, I can understand uh, what Black was trying to do, to get some kind of counterplay with this A-pawn, but actually the king comes over and this pawn just turns out to be vulnerable. And so this is nice technique. The king rushes 
to the queen side, even gaining a tempo. Notice that this pawn is hanging as well. And this pawn is just dropping. Bishop b4. Bishop takes pawn. So now white is a pawn up. And surely more to come with that pawn on a5. Now white advances on the king side. I mean, why not? And I think this is this is the real prize here. Bishop here and looking to play f4, f5, and black is just stretched here. So g5, another pawn on a dark square, although, yeah, it was obviously black wanted to prevent the pawn advancing to f5, but now, well, black is is in is gonna fall into Tugsfang. Now there was a lot of toing and froing here. Um, as I said, I suspect time pressure. And here, black pushed it with a4. Uh, white still needs to show how to win after king b7. There is a win. I mean, this is. I think this is quite nice actually. Let's just see this. You can you can achieve a tugtsvang here. That position is tugtsvang because this bishop has to keep control of this pawn. Has to keep protecting the pawn. Has to stay here as well. And the king can't move backwards. Well, it can't move backwards, but then just white goes forwards. Um, and yeah, if bishop b4, then bishop b3, and one of these pawns is going to drop. So, I mean, that's that's how to do it. After a4, it's very easy. This pawn just gets rounded up. And that was the final position because black resigned this pawn is going to drop and then that's just too much um very tense game but as i said i really like the creativity i i think there were some really great ideas there starting well he's starting with the opening but particularly the middle game when it came to king f1 this is great and the idea of rook h3 and then I think this move, knight f3, was absolutely fantastic. And even then, you know, really tricky position, but white managed to squeeze out a win in the end game. So congratulations to Marco Galana, who wins the Hammersmith Chess Club Best Game of the Season prize.